Hello, Mr. Klim. This is the presentation for our project. My name is Shandor Valentin Stefan, and I'm going to start. So, let me erase this. Wait a second, please. Just one second, please. He's always working, I don't know. I don't know why it wasn't working. Okay. We are going to start with the chapter Shannon and Entropy. Okay. And let's go. So, entropy. And we have our first exercise. Let X be an experiment which can have four possible states x1, x2, x3, x4 and their probabilities P1, P2, P3, and P4. Compute the minimum entropy, so H min. So, let's start by expanding our sheet. And let's write the data. So, for P1 equals A plus B, P2 equals B plus D, P3 equals C plus B, and P4 equals A plus D. We have to compute the minimum entropy, and from the theory we know that in order to do this, we have four cases, and one probability will be one, the other three will be zero. So we have P1 equals one, P2 equals P3 equals P4 equals zero, P2 equals one, P1 equals P3 equals P4 equals zero, P3 equals 1, P2 equals P1 equals P4 equals 0, and P4 equals 1, P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals 0. Okay, so, so we have, we have x1, x2, x3, x4, let's write the probabilities, so a plus b, uh, b plus d, c plus b, and a plus d. Wait a second, okay, so this is p1, p2, p3, and p4. Okay, so we'll start with the first case. 
in the first case scenario I said that we have p1 equals 1 and the other are 0 ok a plus b equals 1 uh, <clears throat> b plus d equals 0 c plus b equals 0 and a plus d equals 0. So this is p1, this is p2, this is p3, this is p4. Good. Uh, let's see, we'll get a plus b equals 1 and let's say we'll use the second relationship, this one. So this one and this one we have b plus d equals 0. Good. We have a plus d plus b to b actually equals 1. But we know that a plus d equals 0 so this will be 0. And that means that to b equals 1 we divide by 2 and we get that b equals 1 over 2 so this is our first our first variable that's good let me expand it please ok so we know that b equals 1 over 2 and now we'll use the first relationship which is a plus b equals 1 b equals 1 over 2 which means that a equals 1 over 2 minus 1 so a equals minus 1 over 2 this is our second variable ok we have b and a now we're going to use um, p3 which is c plus b equals 0 we have uh, we know that b equals 1 over 2 so we'll get that c equals 0 minus 1 over 2 equals minus 1 over this is the third variable and now for d we know that a plus d equals 0 which means that d equals 0 minus minus 1 over 2 equals 1 over 2 okay wait a second uh, so, d is 1 over 2. So, our first, first set of values is a, b, c, d equals minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, and 1 over 2. Let me expand this for a second. And this is for the first case. Now let's go on to the second case. For, for the second case I said that P2 equals 1 and the others are 0. So we have B plus D equals 1. And uh, hmm. Let's use uh, the fourth uh, probability, which states that a plus d equals 0. So, here we have a plus b plus 2d's equals 1. We know that a plus b equals 0, which means that 2d equals 1, d equals 1 over 2, and this is our first variable. 
Okay. So now let's use uh, the fourth probability again, and let's say a plus d equals zero, a plus one over two equals zero, and a equals minus one over two. This is our second variable. Let's go for b. So we have b plus d equals one, uh, b plus 1 over 2 equals 1, b equals 1 minus 1 over 2 equals minus 1 over 2. Uh, wait a second please, let's see, let's see if this is correct. So we have b plus d, no, it's, it doesn't equal 0, I'm sorry. So it, e it equals 1. Uh, we know that d is 1 over 2. b plus 1 over 2 equals 1. 1 minus uh, 1 over 2, it's plus 1 over 2. Sorry. Okay. Let's expand this a little bit. So we have space to write. And now we take the equation a plus b equals 0. We know that b equals 1 over 2, so a plus 1 over 2 equals 0. That means that a equals minus 1 over 2. So, our second set of values is a, b, c, d equals a is minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, um, I did a mistake. I did a mistake. I'm sorry. Let me see. I forgot to compute. Oh my god. Yeah, wait a second, please. So, we used uh, the wrong e equation. Let me erase this real quick. We already knew the value for a. I don't know why I did this, but yeah. So let's get let's get an equation in which we have c. So let's see where do we have c? Um, so. For the second one, we have C in P3. Okay, so C plus B equals 0. Let's write it. C plus B equals 0. We know that B equals 1 over 2, so C equals 0 minus B equals 0 minus 1 over 2, and it equals minus 1 over 2. Okay, so C will be minus 1 over 2, and D will be over 2. So this is our second set of values. Now let's go and compute the third, third one. So in the third case, wait a second please. Okay. We know that um, in the third case we know that a plus b equals 0, b plus d equals 0, c plus b equals 1, and a plus d equals 0. I wrote them again in order for you to see the probabilities. This is p1, this is p2, this is p3, and this is p4. So, let's start. From this probability c plus b equals 1, we deduct that b equals 1 minus c, and let's go, a plus 1 minus c equals 0. We took this one from here and replaced it in here. 
we know from P1 that A plus B is zero. And we get that A plus one minus C is zero. So A minus C is minus one. So A equals C minus one. Good. We go to another distribution. So A plus D equals zero. We say that A plus D equals zero. C minus one plus D equals zero. I took the A from here. So you know, so I'll go and write over here because I have some space. Uh, we get that C plus D equals one. And this is a very good relationship. We already have the one for B, the one for C plus D. Okay, now let's see where can I use this. Um, okay, we have in P3 that C plus B equals 1. So C plus B equals 1. So we have two C's plus B plus D equals 2. We know that B plus D equals 0, so 2 C equal 2. C equals 2 over 2 equals 1. Nice. We have our first variable. We have that we know that C equals 1. Let me expand this, please. Okay. So, we know that C equals 1. Good. We can, we can solve everything with this variable. We, we know that C plus D equals 1. So, C plus D equals 1. C equals 1. D equals 0. We have our second variable, b equals 1 minus c, b equals 1 minus 1, b equals 0, this is the third one, and now we have to find out, we have to find the a variable, so we know that a minus c equals minus 1, a minus 1 equals minus 1, and a equals 0. Good, we have a b, c, and d. Let's expand this. Okay. So, our third set of values, a, b, c, and d, will be a is 0, b is 0, c is 1, d is 0. Good. Now we have one more one more probability for the minimum entropy we need to use the fourth probability so this is the third one now for the fourth one we know that a plus d equals 1 so a plus d equals 1 okay so I will use the second probability with which states that b plus d equals 0 so we have a plus b plus two d's equals one. A plus b, we know that it equals zero because this is the first probability and in order for it to be, uh, in order for us to find out the minimum entropy, uh, only one of the probabilities will be equal to one, the rest of them will be equal to zero. So, we know that two d's equal one, d equals one over two. And that's good. We'll circle it real quick. Okay. Let's see. Let's take another probability and we'll we'll say that a plus b equals zero, which means that uh, a plus one over two equals zero, and a equals minus one over two. Good. We have our second variable. We know that b plus d equals 0, um, b equals 0 minus d equals 0 minus 1 over 2 equals minus 1 over 2. This is b and now we have to find out the value for c. Let me do my thing please. Okay, so uh, let's take 
uh, the third probability, which states that C plus B equals zero. We know that B is one, minus one over two, so C minus one over two equals zero, which means that C equals one over two. Good. So now we have A, the set of values A, B, C, D equal to minus one over two, minus one over two, 1 over 2 and 1 over 2. This is for the fourth case scenario. So, let's make a quick recap. Okay, so, let's see what we learned from every case. From the first case, we learned that for A, B, C, D, we have minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, and 1 over 2. For the second case, we get A, B, C, D equal to, and it equals to minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, and uh, Wait a second, please, because I forgot. I think it was minus... Yes, it's minus 1 over 2. So, minus 1 over 2 and 1 over 2. Good. For the third case, we know that A, B, C, D equals... Uh, it equals uh, 0, 0, 1 and 0. And for the fourth case, we know that A, B, C, and D equal let's see, minus 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, and 1 over 2. So, these are all the possible sets of values for A, B, C, D in order for uh, the entropy to be at its minimum. So, H min. And these are the values and this is the response. So, QED. Let's go to the next er exercise. Wait a second, please. It's my first time writing on something like this, and I have to tell you, it is not pleasant. And it's not a walk in the park. So, second exercise. Let's get to it. We have, um, let's say, we have three six-sided dice are brought. What is the entropy of the probability Distribution, distribution for the outcome. I don't know if I phrased this correctly, but please forgive me. You will see during this exercise what I mean. So, if we roll one dice, the probability for it will be 1 over 6 for any value. If we roll two dice, the probability for it will be 1 over 6 times, so be careful, times, because we have two dice, so it will be 1 over 36. What, what will happen if we have three dice? 
well the same thing for the second so probability will be equal to 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 and it will be equal to 1 over let's see 36 times 6 6 times 6 36 we keep it in mind 18 21 so uh, 216 good now let's compute the entropy using the formula formula you gave us at the seminar let's see so entropy equals sum of i equals 1 n and you have probability times log base 2 probability ok so we have minus parenthesis 1 over 116 times log base 2 of 216 to minus 1 plus 1 over 216 times log in base 2 216 at minus 1 plus tan 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 plus 1 over 216 times log in base 2 of 216 at minus 1 pay attention this is equal to 1 over p so it's 1 over 216 actually Okay. So, um, no, this is not a one over p. Sorry, I'm uh, I got I, I don't know what got into me. So this is p actually. This is the probability. Okay. But this sum, we will add these items uh, two hundred and sixteen times. So, 1 over 216 plus 1 over 216 plus 1 over 216 will have, will have uh, 1. It will equal 1 because we'll factor by log in base 2 of 216 at minus 1. So, let me expand this again. Oh, sorry, I don't know what I did. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so... Let's expand this. Pam pam. Good. So it equals to minus log in base two of two hundred sixteen at minus one times one. Because I don't want to, I could have written something like this y equals 1 216 of 1 over 216, and this will be equal to 1. So that I, that's, what I, that's why I said 1 here. Okay. So let's see. It equals to minus a uh, log in base 2 of 216 at minus 1 and this goes here and it cancels the minus so we have log in base 2 of 216 but we can't write something like this because I don't know I don't like the result I want to get a clear approximation and uh, we'll do some basic maths from high school and let's see uh, 216 it's 6 at the power of 3 so we have log in base 2 of 6 at the third at 3 so we have 3 times log in base 2 of 6 uh, and this equals 3 times log in base 2 of 2 times 3, we'll try to expand this, 
and we'll have 3 times log in base 2 of 2 plus 3 times log in base 2 of 2 and this is equal to 3 uh, oh, this is this is 3 here, sorry but this uh, this right here will be uh, larger than, th than 3 so it will be something like 4 point something so we'll have the final result with approximation 7 point something so this is the final result this is the, un the entropy of the probability distribution for the outcome and with this exercise uh, we basically end the Shannon part of the project of the project and the entropy part thank you now my colleague will take over okay now I'm going to talk about uh, codes like the um, 8421 code uh, XS3 and gray code and I'm going to explain them a little bit to you and for example we're going to take the number uh, let's say 1984 uh, this is in decimal so we're going to convert it in binary coded decimal or 8421 and we're going to say that uh, 1 in decimal is 0, 0, 0, 1 because this is 2 to the power 0 which is 1 9 in decimal is 8 plus 1 because this is to the two to the power 0 to the power 1 2 and 3 and we're going to have uh, 2 to the power 3 and 0 which is 8 plus 1 and it is 9 so we're going to do this for 8 and 4 and we're going to get um, that 1984 in decimal is 0, 0, 0, 001 1001 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 and 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. this is uh, in 8421 code uh, now we're going to talk about um, XS3 code and I'm going to explain to you how you can convert this number from decimal to XS3. Um, basically, XS3, what, what it means, uh, you add 3 to each uh, number in here. So we have uh, 1984. Plus three, 4 plus 3 is 7 8 plus 3 is 11 9 plus 3 is 12 and 9 plus 3 is 4 so uh, the number we got earlier in 8421 uh, we add we, we can also there are two methods of doing this uh, you have this number and you can simply add to it you can do this but I prefer this method because it's easier but if you already have this number don't hesitate to just calculate this uh, sum so you're going to get that which is actually 7 you know this is 7 in binary uh, okay, and let's get back to this and write it in XS3. So we said that 7 in binary is uh, 0, 1, 1, 1. 11 in binary, in binary code decimal or 8421 is uh, 8 plus 
3. Uh, Nanko is 312, uh, and this is 1100, and 1 plus 34 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So this is uh, in excess 3, the number 1984, which is in 10th base. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the gray code, which is a little bit trickier than uh, XS3 and 8421. Um, we're going to copy the... No, actually we're not. We're going to convert this number into binary, and we can do that by two methods, but I think the best method is to divide this number by two until we can't anymore. So, 1984 divided by two, we have the remainder zero, and we get 992, remainder zero, and 496. Then we divide this again by two until we can't anymore. So, this is the thing that we're doing right now. Uh, this is 248, 0, 124, 0, 62, 0, uh, 31. Uh, 31 divided by 2, we have a remainder of 1 and we get 15. Uh, divided by 2 again, remainder 1, 7, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, and we get 0. We can't divide 0 by 2 anymore, so... We take this number from down to up and you will see that this number in binary, this is the binary number and this will get us to 1984. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so how do we get 1984 out of this? Well, uh, as I said earlier, this is to the power 0, to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, I mean, this is correct, but you can verify it, and it's uh, to the power 10 plus 2 to the power 9 plus 2 to the power 8 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 6. Uh, this will get you 1984. So, if you're not sure about this result, you can calculate it. Uh, okay, so this, uh, to do the gray code, you first had to do this step. To get the number in binary, we're going to copy it again, so we can have it here clean. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the rule for gray code is that you have to take the first bit and copy it. This is 1 in gray code. And um, you take the next bit and sum it modulo and then you will get, uh, I'm going to write it here, 1 plus modulo 1 is 0. So here we're going to have 0. Then we're going to do this with every number until we don't have in, in, any more bits in our number. So 1 plus 1 modulo will be again 0, 1 with 1, 0, oh, I don't know what I pressed, okay, uh, I'm going to erase this, I'm sorry. So we said 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then we're going to have uh, 1 plus modulo 0, which will be 1. And then we just can copy the rest of the number because uh, all of them will be 0. 
Uh, so we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is the number in gray code, which is 1984 in decimal. Now, um, I'm going to do not a simple exercise, not a hard exercise, uh, just a normal one that you can see at tests or something like that. Um, what is the representation of this number that is in uh, base 10? In bases, uh, in binary, in octal, or in hexadecimal? So we're going we're going to do this uh, at first for these two we're actually going to have to do the binary base so evidently uh, we're going to take uh, the dividable method just as we did there earlier so uh, 52 divided by two remainder zero we get 26 0 13. Uh, here we have 1, 6, 0, 3, 1, 1, 1, and 0. We're going to get this, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then, for uh, what's after the... Um, here at comma, instead of dividing it, we're going to multiply it by 2. And um, when we get 1, before the dot, uh, after the dot, we're going to put it as a remainder. Uh, I mean here as a remainder. So we're going to have here one and one zero. Here we're not going to put anything. So just leave this space blank. Uh, here, this one is going here and then we cut it out. Well, we don't need it anymore because it's here and this we multiply by 2 so we're going to get here 0 0.20 uh, this will be 0 so basically you copy what's in the left side uh, after the comma and you put it on the right and that will be the binary number for uh, what's after the comma so we're going to get 0 at 40, which is 0, 0, uh, 0 0.80, yes, which is 0, 1.61, after that we're going to get 120, which is 1, then 0, 040, 0, 0, 080, 0, and 1.60. Actually, we can see that we have a period here. Uh, and that means that the number from here all the way up to here it will repeat itself as you can see uh, so we get here 1.60 and then 1.20 and it's 1 then we get 0 0.40 which is 0, 0 0.80 and this will repeat itself so it's a period then it's reversed from uh, binary, so we from uh, the dividable method. So we're going up to down, and then we're going to get the 0 0.55, which is in base 10, is actually uh, 1 0, and here it's 0. Point. Uh, it's 1 0 0. 0, 1, 1. In the, this is uh, evident in binary. So, uh, again, this number in 10 base is uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, point 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, which will be in the period. This is in base 2, binary. <coughs> And uh, we practically completed the first step. We're going to copy this number so we can have it here. Uh, like this. And then 
for the octal base, we're going to group them uh, on three bits because I don't really know how to tell you in English but trust me, this is how it's done so we have uh, 110 100 and then we're going to uh, open the period so we're going to have 0 from period uh, this is a group of three bits. Then we have zero one one. Then it's going to be another period, but we must find out what period. Then it will be zero zero one. We're going to have one zero zero, and then one one zero zero one one. And uh, zero zero one one zero zero one one zero and so on and so forth. This number it's like just eight four two one that I done earlier. This is to the power zero to the power one to the power two. So we're going to have um, here is the number six. Here is four dot four three one four six three one four six. So well, we can see that we have another period here, and uh, I think it begins right over here. Yes, you can see that it will repeat itself. So we have uh, 52.55, that was the original number in decimal for base 10, is actually 64.4 period 3146 in octal. Okay. Now we're going to do hexadecimal. Uh, instead of grouping it in um, groups of three bits, we're going for a byte, for a nibble, uh, or four bits. So uh, the number in binary was 110.100.10.0011. Period zero zero one one. Uh, we group these four. And then we can see that we only have two bits remaining. So that, that's no problem because we can uh, put two bits, two zeros back here because they won't affect the number. Because uh, as you see, as you have seen earlier, the number is based on the one bits, not on the zero bits. So these practically won't do nothing. They will just help us to group this number. Uh, so, here in hex we're going to have, um, this is 3, uh, this is 4, so we got 34.10, and then we're going to open the period again, so we'll have um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 and so on and so forth. Um, this in hex practically means uh, 8. I mean it's just as binary. This is 12 and here is the tricky part in hex because 12 doesn't exist in hex. 12 is noted differently and uh, I'm going to show you here on the right side um, in hex we can define numbers up to a certain point. This is 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Uh, these are expressed in 8421. Uh, this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 and so on and so forth. But then 
which is in binary actually uh, 1010 this isn't 10 it's a so practically a means 10 in decimal these all are in 10th base but this one is in hex so practically a will be 10 which will be 1010 b will be 11 c is 12 so here it's actually C, here it's C as well, C as well, and we have these numbers A, B, C, D, E, and F. F is 15, E is 14, D is 13, C is 12, B is 11, and A is 10. So practically the number 52.55 that is in 10th base will be 34.55. 8 period C in hexadecimal base. Okay. Um, my name is Saf Radish and I'm going to solve some Hemming exercises. So, the first exercise we have the initial message 101110 one, one, and we have to write in hex the received message now uh, the first step we have to find out the number of uh, control digits and for this we're going to use the next formula where M means the, the digits from the initial message and K means um, the number of dig control digits. So M is 8, as we can count. So 2 to the K will be greater or equal than 9 plus K so the correct value and we have to choose the minimum value that uh, actually is good so k will be 4 so 16 is greater than 13 now after we calculate the number of uh, control digits we are going to write the Hemming matrix so, and the matrix hem the Hemming matrix will be composed by four rows because the K is four and eight columns. Uh, sorry, tw uh, twelve columns because the number of columns will be equal to the to total number of total number of digits of the message. So the matrix will be zero zero. Zero. Sorry, I will have some problems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two more. And this matrix we're going to multiply by the transposed vector message which will be C1 C2 
then one is free. And now, um, in order for this message to have no errors, we have to put the condition that the result will be 0, 0, 0, 0. I forgot to mention at the start of this exercise that we suppose that uh, we have no errors in the received message. Now we are going to calculate the modulo, the modulo addition that will result from the matrix and it's going to be C4 second. This one has to be zero. This one also has to be zero. This one also zero, and the last one so now we are going to look at our initial message and we know that this is M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7 and M8 so now we can write that C4 And we get C4 from this, which will be 1. Then we have C3, 0, 1, 1, and 1, which has to be 0, so C3 is 1 and then we have C2 1 so C2 will be 0 this one also equals to 0 and for C1 one extra one okay so this has to be also zero so c1 is zero after we found out all the control digits we can write 
the received message supposing that we have no errors so the received message will be C1 C2 in M1 C3 M2 M3 M4 C4 M5 M6 and M7 M8 which will be 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 and to convert this in hex can draw some nibbles we need here one more Here we need one more bit and it will be zero. And now we can convert this number from binary to hex and it will be one B B which is the final answer. Now the second exercise, we have a hemming word that was received and the message is 1011 We have to find out the initial message So, to find out the initial message, we have to write again the Hamming matrix. And we know that from these 12 digits, 4 of them are um, Hamming bits. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So, right now we can write the matrix Now we have to multiply this by the transposed vector, message vector, which is this one. So it's going to be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now we can calculate the answer and the, num the, the answer will be actually the position of the error if there is one in binary so we can start calculate the first one is going to be one 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 which is one 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 which is zero one 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 and one one
so this is going to be the position of the of the error and this number is actually one zero one one and this number is one plus two plus eight which is eleven so this is the position of the of the error and if we, if we look into our message on the eleventh position which is this one so this is the, the error and we have to change this bit to actually be zero for this now we can write the correct the initial message without hemming bits and without errors and it is going to be so we remove the bit, the hemming bits and we write zero on the eleventh position. The initial message is going to be one one zero zero one one zero zero and this number in hex represents C C and this is the final answer. The next exercise we have a received message which is one zero zero one one zero one zero one one zero one zero wait a second zero one one zero and we have to check if this message was uh, correctly received or not and we also have the generator polynomial which is x to the 7 x to the 7 plus a x to the 6 plus x to the 3 plus x to second plus x plus 1 now we can also write this like in the same form In order to check if this message was correctly received or not, we have to check if the message is still divisible with the generator polynomial. So we just divide the message with the polynomial again. And we write like this. And now we can start. So the first is going to be x to the seven. Going to be here we have this. Now we can divide by x to the 6 and it's going to be and here we have x to 11 plus x to 10 plus x to 9 plus x to 
seven plus x to four plus x to two plus x can divide by x to the fourth. Now <coughs> we have it's going to be Now we can divide by x to second and it's going to be x to 9 plus x to 8 plus x to 5 plus x to 4 plus x to 3 plus x to 2 and it's going to be x to 8 plus x to 6 plus x to 4 plus x to 3 plus 1 we can divide by x and it's going to be x to 8 plus x to 7 plus x to 4 plus x to 3 plus x to 2 plus x going to be x to 7 plus x to 6 plus x to 2 plus x plus 1 now we can write by 1 and it's going to be x to 7 plus x to 6 plus x to 3 plus x to 2 plus x plus 1 so the rest is x to 3 which means that the message was is not correct because the rest is not equal to 0 and when the rest is not equal to 0 it means that the message isn't correct if the rest was 0 then the message would be correct the next exercise we have an initial message the next exercise we have an initial message which is 62 in hex and the generator polynomial which is 101 and we have to find out the received message so to start we're going to convert this number in binary and it's going to be 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 which is x to the 6 plus x to 5 plus x and now we have to multiply m with the degree of the polynomial which is uh, 2 so we're going to write m prime equals m or x to second and it's going to be x to 8 plus x to 7 plus x to 3 now after we got m prime we have to we, we have to divide it by the generator polynomial and we start to divide so this is x, uh, m prime this is the generator polynomial and we start I'm going to write x to here is 8 x to 6 and it's going to be x to 8 plus x to 6 and here is going to remain 1 x to 7 plus x to 6 plus x to 3 after this we can divide by x to 5 and it's going to be x to 7 plus x to 5 which 
is going to be x to 6 plus x to 5 plus x to 3 now we can divide by x to 4 it's going to be x to 6 plus x to 4 here is going to remain x to 5 plus x to 4 plus x to 3 can divide by x to 3 it's going to be x to 5 plus x to 3 it's going to be x to 4 which we can divide by x to 2 it's going to be x to 4 plus 1 plus x to 2 which is going to be x to 2 and we still can divide by 1 and we're going to, to get x to second plus 1 so the rest will be 1 now after we found out the rest we can calculate the received message t prime is going to be m prime plus l and is going to be x to 6 plus x to 5 plus x plus 1 so t prime is going to be 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 and to convert this in hex it's going to be 63 so the answer is 63 in hex uh, now I'm going to talk about um, some exercises about fixed points uh, which are pretty important um, let's say we have two numbers uh, and one which will be 14 and let's say n2 which will be minus 14 so we're going to have to show how these numbers look in uh, direct code inverse code and complementary code or this is also called two's complement So, actually, 14 is uh, pretty easy to represent in these codes because 14, uh, we will do it in binary coded decimal or BCD. So, 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1 and 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So, this is pretty basic, pretty simple. Uh, this is the sign bit sign bit and 0 is for positive numbers so numbers that are greater than 0 and 1 is for negative numbers numbers which are smaller than 0 so minus 14 in direct code is actually 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 <coughs> um, if we have zero at the sign bit, uh, if we apply inverse code or complementary code, um, it's actually going to be the same number because uh, nothing is going to change because the sign bit is zero. So we have zero zero one zero one zero zero. The, there is no change here in the in this case so that's the number but here when you have minus 14 and this is our number in direct code in inverse code we'll actually have guess what we'll, in, we'll reverse the bits so instead uh, except the sign bit so we're going to have one 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 zero one zero one one this is uh, in inverse code mm, minus 14 represented in inverse code and the complementary code 
we're going to read it from the right to the left side uh, we're going to read the direct code so we have and copy it down we have 0, 0 and 1 uh, when we encounter the first one we still copy it uh, on the complementary code but after the one all the bits will be re reversed, like the inverse code. So uh, here is 0, we're going to have 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1. Uh, the sign bit will, will never change, the sign bit will always stay the same. So this is the number in complementary code. Now we're going to make some calculations in uh, fixed point so you can familiarize yourself with this this is uh, uh, the first number that we're going to take and this is the second number uh, we're going to do a basic addition I mean fixed point is not that hard so you'll get it as you go as you go uh, this is we're, we're looking to get 130 uh, but we have to do the representation as well. So this is in direct code and direct code. Uh, we're going to work on three nibbles because uh, earlier in the exercise, in the first exercise, uh, we didn't have uh, any calculations to do. So it was more convenient to work on two nibbles. But here, when even we have even if we have a small uh, addition and or subtraction, let's say uh, we're going to have to work on three nibbles because there is a there is a certain case that um, our numbers will overlap with the sign bit or anything like that. So uh, here actually we're going to have two positive numbers which is uh, no big deal, but if we had minus, you'll see in, that, in the next exercise that uh, it's more complicated than this, so uh, you have to get used to this to work on more enables, but the, you have to to make sure so you don't make mis mistakes uh, Okay. Uh, we can do the addition di directly in this code. It's just a simple addition. So this is zero 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 one zero one one zero 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 zero. So this is basically thirteen. This is zero. So we're going to get on and thirty. <coughs> Uh, no, actually, this this. Sorry, I made a mistake. Um, this is not how it's calculated. Um, here you are going to see the correction factor. Uh, this number is greater than nine in decimal. This number is actually thirteen, as you saw earlier. So we're going to add to it uh, the correction factor, which is six. So we're going to add zero one. 1, 0, forget about this, we have 1, 1, 0, 1 in our mind, 1, 0, and the 1 here in our mind will go up here and here, so it's 1. So this is 1, this is 3, and this is, is 0, so we are going to have 130 which is correct. And then, uh, the next exercise will be a little bit more tricky, but after this we're done with the fixed point. Um, I want to show you how, when, how to deal with a negative number and what to do with it. Uh, we're going to take N1 to be 40 and N2 to be 90 again. And we're going to do n1 minus minus n2. So 
practically we're going to have minus 90 and plus 40 here. Uh, okay. In direct code we already did it. Zero, zero. Now you're going to see why we work on uh, three nimbles because it's more helpful. Uh, subtractions. Uh, we'll have one here because now 90 is uh, minus 90 is a negative number, so we're going to have one uh, at the same bit. One zero zero one zero 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 zero. This is in direct code. Now we're actually going to use inverse code because. Uh, inverse code and uh, complementary code are very useful at uh, subtractions because many times when you use uh, direct code you will not get the correct result uh, neither with inverse code the complementary code actually is the best one to work with and I think it's the easiest one because you will see uh, in this exercise that uh, you will have to do a normalization it's practically the reverse step of what you saw earlier and that works uh, if you have uh, an operation to do or anything and you get one at, uh, at the sign bit at the result you have to do a normalization to practically to return to the initial value that will be correct but in inverse code uh, many times uh, it will be wrong and in complementary code it will be right <coughs> so let's start with this uh, as you can see in direct code 40 has zero at the sign bit so we can just simply copy the number uh, and then in inverse code here we have one, so we have one 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 zero one one zero one 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 one. Uh, this it's a sum, so one 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 zero one zero one 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 one. Evidently, this will not get us the result. It's fifty. It's evidently that it's larger than 50 so we have to do the normalization which is practically reversing the step that reversed our bits so we we'll have one at the same bit because we'll not change it that's not how it's done and we have zero 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 one zero one zero 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 this is zero this is five this is minus as you can see we have the correct result which is minus fifty here if we had done the addition you can see that we would have gotten the a number larger than five and zero and minus this is actually 8 plus 4 13 it's actually 13 it's not correct we will have to do the, the correction factor and all that and we would get uh, minus 130 which is not the correct answer and uh, we'll do this calculation again in complementary code and I'll show you the normalization but it's pretty basic um, okay, so we have zero 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 one zero 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 uh, here um, let me get the direct code number so you can see uh, as we said earlier we're going to copy from the right to the left until we have met the first one bit and then everything else we're going to reverse it okay so we're going to have here oh, we're going to have uh, 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 and this is 0 0 0 0 1 1 
zero one 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 okay and we have to do again the normalization which in complementary code read from re right to the left until the first one bit and then the rest will be reversed except the sign bit so we'll have one zero 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 one zero one zero 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 this is five this is minus and this is zero so this is the correct answer we have minus 50 for the next exercise we have the number minus 218 point Two four five, and we have to represent this in floating point double precision. So to solve this exercise, first the first thing we have to write two hundred and eighteen in binary, and I will start to do this. Wait a second, there was one mistake. So 218 is going to be 11011010 and now we have to represent in binary 0 0.245 and we start So it's going to be like this. We're going to multiply by 2 each number and if it's higher than 1 then we're going to write and 1 and if it's lower than 1 we're going to write 0.
and as we can observe this one the last one we calculated and this one um, we're going to determine our period so our period will be from here up to here so actually we can write the number 0 0.245 in binary like this And now we can write the whole number, which is going to be now we have to look at this and see how many position is going to move it's one two three four five six seven when we arrive here at the first digit we uh, we stop so seven seven positions so this is the exponent Now the next thing we have to call to calculate the characteristic and for double precision floating point is going to be 1023 plus 7 our exponent and it's going to be 1030 and now we have to now we can write the floating point representation and for this we're going to have the first bit it's going to be the sign is negative so it's going to be one and then the following 11 bits are going to be our characteristic which is 1030 so we can write it it's going to be one zero 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 zero, zero. Zero one one zero. So I've made a little mistake here because I wrote one zero in plus so I'm going to undo this and write again now it should be fine yeah there are 11 bits from the characteristic this is the sign byte sign bit sorry and now we have to write the mantissa and the mantissa we're going is going to be like from all the digits up to here up from here and to here and we're going to the mantissa is going to have 52 bits because there is there are 11 bits one more and the total has to be 64 and we can start to write it and now from he from here is going to be the period
and the next beats are going to be again the the, the period so we have to go like this until we have here 52 bits which is Antisa and it's always uh, and it's going to be like the digits from here to here and the period and we write digits from the period until we get the 52 bits here is the characteristic which is 11 bits which is like this for double precision and one bit for sign and this is the representation in floating point double precision for the number given okay so now we're going to continue with boolean algebra wait a second please let me expand this real quick okay so boolean algebra good first exercise we are given a function so we have f of a b c equals a times b plus not a times c uh, plus b times c times 1 good our objective is to simplify the function and bring it to the best form so why right here simplify it simplify it good so let's start wait a second please i will be back okay so let's start we'll have this function equals equals a times b plus a not a times c plus b times c times here we have one but i want to expand this one so it will help me further away so uh, instead of one i'm going to write a plus not a so i will be able to factor it to bring it to a better form you will see as i go so we have a times b plus not a times c plus b times c times a plus b times times c times not a which equals 2 a times b plus not a times c plus a times b times c plus not a times b times c good so next up i'm going to expand this because i want to have space in order to write good so let's see now what i'm going to do is try to group them put them together so we have a times b and we will take this one plus a times b times c plus not a times c and now i'm going to take this one plus not a times b times c equals to let's see a times b times 1 plus c because here we have a 1 and the c is right here good plus not a times c 
times 1 plus C B sorry this is the uh, yeah sorry, sorry sorry and from the theory we know that everything anything plus 1 guess what equals 1 so this will be 1 this will be 1 so it adds up to a times b plus not a times c and this is the best form of the function so this is the result good now for the second exercise i'm going to i'm going to actually use the first one like this so let's write we have two we'll have to draw but we will draw the function so for the first part for the for a we'll draw the the, the base function the one that is hard to read and for the second part we'll draw the simplified function function so we'll start with a let me do this thing good so i write a here so we have three variables we have a we have b and c so the first function function was a times b plus not a times c plus b times c so what i'm going to do is group them we have a times b so we'll draw something like this and we're going to use this one back function this is called the end function and the output will be a times b next up we have not a times c so from this i'm going to go down in here good i'll have to negate this one so we we'll do a little triangle with a dot and the output will be not a right now we have not a and from c i draw a line and I'm going to use the same function which will give me the output a not a times c good so now we have this one and this one we need to do one more thing we need to do the b times c so I am going to I'm going to go a little bit down so I'll go with B like this and like this I'll take one from C and I'll use the same function this function give me gives me the output of B times C so now everything I have to do is actually add them up so we draw this this and this we're going to draw this like this we're going to extend this and right now I'll use the OR function and this will give me the output of my function f of x 
and this is the first drawing. Now for the second one I'll have to use the simplified function. So let's see I will uh, draw it right here. B. I'll uh, wait a second. Okay. So B. My f of x is a times b plus not a times c. This will be an easier one. So I have a b c. Good. We need a times b. So draw a line from a, draw a line from b, intersect them with this function and this will give me the output of a times b. Everything is good but I need to negate the a variable so I'll draw a line here down, down here. Okay I'll draw a little triangle. This will help me negate the variable so I have not a but we need a not a times c. I'll draw a line from c and I will compose the function. It's the exact same function we have right here. Wait a second please. It's like this. And I'll have not a times c. But we need to add them up so I'll draw a line here and here. Here and here. I will intersect them with this function and the result will be a times b plus not a times c. Sorry I didn't have to do this right here. Uh, yeah, but this is equal to f of x. So this is the second exercise where I drew the functions, I do the circuits and I actually solved it right now. Okay, uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, the Carnot, Carnot table, uh, which is a chapter in... Uh, oh, wait, in Boolean algebra. Uh, my colleague talked a bit earlier about uh, the drawings, the schematics and uh, all the rules in Boolean Algebra and today, I mean not today, in this part I'm going to show you uh, practically how to simplify an operation that you have and it will be easier as you will see. Uh, first I need to give you the function so we have f x, y, z, w and we're going uh, to I'm going to make an exercise with, with uh, max, max terms uh, so we're going to have m1, m2, m3, m4, m5 uh, not, not m, m3, m7 here will be 9 M9, M10, M11, no, this is R, it's a redundant bit, I will show you how to work with it, uh, this is also a redundant bit, this is M12, R14, and M15. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to draw the table and uh, how to put these numbers inside of it. Uh, here we're going to have 0, 0. This is actually a bit of code, uh, codes in gray code. So you're going to see that we're going to put 1, 1 here and 1, 0. Because in gray code, this is the sign that we have switched places. Because normally in binary, this this would be the last number. But in gray code, this is the last number. Because 
as I told you earlier, you copy the first number here, it will be 1, and then you have 1, 1, uh, summed up in modulo, and you get 0. So practically this would be the last number in gray code. This is why they are reversed. And here we're going to have the same thing. Okay. It's uh, very important to remember this because if you don't and you start to make an exercise you, you won't get the correct result. 6, 7. Then we're going to have 8 here because the lines have been switched. 8, 9 and 10 would be here because the columns have switched. And we have 12 here, 13 here and 14 here and 15 here. Now, uh, M1, we're going to put it here, M2 here, <coughs> M3, M7, M9, R10, R11, uh, M12, R14, and M15. Okay, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about redundant bits. Um, they are not uh, necessary, but they are a good thing to have, and um, you can use them to make larger groups that will simplify even more uh, your calculations, uh, as you will see. But uh, you don't have to stress about them, you don't have to group them to... Uh, express them in any way, shape or, f or form if they don't help you. I mean, you can just leave them there and they won't affect your calculations at all. So, uh, we're going to make some groups and I'm going to change the color so it can be seen better. Um, okay. So, we're going to take a, to make a first group so we can get rid of this. We're going to take this one and this one this is the first group then uh, the second group will and I think this would be a good one this is uh, the second group imagine that this uh, plane can be a ball uh, and you can select anything from opposite ends uh, just as I've done in the first group and the second group uh, this is allowed, you can do this and it will simplify your calculations even more uh, this I think would be the third group and we're going to take these redundant bits as you can see here there are only redundant bits and here are only the bits we need but if we take these redundant bits and these bits we're going to have uh, even more simple calculations and we're going to take yellow and this will be our fourth group okay Um, okay, so the first group, uh, we're looking of when we are having exercises with uh, max terms, we're looking for zeros here, not ones. Uh, when we're working with uh, mean terms, we're looking for ones, not zeros. So, uh, here, in the first group, we're going to have not x plus not y, because we have here 1, 1, which resembles x, y, uh, and this is the line that we have um, bits on, and then this is 0, 0, and one zero. We are actually going to take not double, uh, 
simple w because w uh, here and here it's zero <coughs> and we're not going to touch z because it changes here so here it's zero and here it's one so this is why the redundant bits help us because if we would have taken just this m we would have a lot more variables we would have uh, even z but we just have these three instead of four and we will simplify the calculations this actually uh, at the end it shows us the most simplified uh, way of the function so it's good to know uh, now we're going to talk about the second group uh, which is y because y it's 0 here and 0 here and x changes actually so we're not going to take him it's just y plus um, not w because 0 change uh, z excuse me z changes from 0 to 1 as you can see and w just stays the same and we're looking to make zeros so it's not w because not 1 guess what it's 0 now we're going to talk about the third group <laughs> which also uses redundant bits and you, as you can see the redundant bits have helped us quite a lot actually and uh, here we're going to have not z because z not, doesn't change plus uh, y y is 0, y is 0, x is 0, x is 1 and the fourth group which is this yellow one will be not z plus not w plus nothing actually it's just these two because x and y change all along the matrix so the final function after we have used the Carnot table will, will look like this uh, <coughs> not x plus not y plus not w next to y not w not z plus y and not z plus not w this is the final result and we have successfully used the Carnot table so this uh, this is it good so now we'll start with some assembly exercises let's see the first exercise but firstly I will expand the board ok ASM the first exercise sounds like this uh, I will have some comments and I will need to find out AX equals what BX equals what CX equals what and DX equals what good in order to do this I'll first write the comments so move AX 8 4 F D move BX F E C A these are all in hex move CX 0 1 2 3 in hex and move DX 1 1 1 1 also in hex we'll push the first variable push AX will negate B not BX let me expand this please real quick ok it's good so after not BX we'll write not CX we'll have a shift left function DH D high A low D rogat A low 
we will pop AX and we will negate DX so let's do it step by step from the first line of code in AX we will have 8 4 F D in hex from the second line of code we'll have bx equal to f e c a in hex cx will be equal to 0 1 2 3 in hex and dx will be equal to 1 1 1 1 in hex push ax okay so i'll draw a stack which goes by the LIFO principle, L-I-F-O last in, first out and here will be my variable here I have AX which is 8, 4, F and D not BX, this will be the first the first one not CX the second shift left the third but here we have a pop AX so it doesn't matter what I do here in the first, second or third step if we pop AX we pop this one which is in the stack the only one which is in the stack so AX will be equal to 8, 4, F, D in hex oh this is a D this is a D, just so you know. 84 FD in hex. Good. And for the fourth, f the last step, we'll have to negate DX. Good. Let's take it step by step. I will change the color of my pen to blue. So, 1. Not BX. So, BX is F E C A in hex. If we negate it, we'll have that bx equals f negated is 0, e negated is 1, c negated is 3, and a negated is 5. And this will be in hex. So this is the first one, and this is the second one. For the second step, we have not cx. So we'll negate, negate CX. CX is 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 negated is, wait a second, is F. 1 negated is E. 2 negated is D. And 3 negated, yes, you guessed, it's C. And also in hex. Good. For the third step, third iteration we have a shift left with dh and a low d drogat is wait a second dh is let's see we know that dx is 1111 and we didn't uh, change the variables so we'll keep this so dx is 11 in hex a low is equal to let's see ax is 8 4 fd so a low will be fd fd is a very big number so i will have to shift left uh, basically 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 but i will shift absolutely everything because fd is bigger than 5 6 7 8 so it doesn't i don't need to actually compute this uh, fd because after this iteration i will know that um, dh is equal to 0 0 in hex i already popped ax and now i have to negate dx so dx is equal to let's see um, I changed dh so it 
will be equal to 0, 0 and 1, 1 in hex. I will negate this, so dx will be equal to 0 negated is f, 0 negated is f, 1 negated is e, and 1 negated is also e. So, after this exercise, we know that ax is equal to 84fd, bx is equal to 0135, cx is equal to fedc, and dx is equal to ffee. -E. Every value is in hex. Now uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make uh, the last exercise, which would be an ASM exercise, assembly language. Um, it's not that hard, it's not that complicated. Uh, actually, I thought this would be a smart idea to do. I'm going to make this a big box. And I'm going to write here. So we have uh, move ax, uh, let's say 1, c, 2, 4, this is in hex. And I'm going to have bx, 4, 1, 3, 2, this is also in hex. Uh, move CX uh, nine D one three in hex and more DX uh, which would be zero nine eight zero. This is also in hex. Then I'm going to do a push. Let's say push AX SHL DL CH push the x not the x so the x checks and pop x okay this will do um now let's do it let's do the exercise so uh, this means mov x that uh, ix will take the value 1, c, 2, 4 in hex, bx will be 4, 1, 3, 2 in hex, cx will be 9, d, 1, 3 in hex, and D, e, dx will be 0, 9, 8, 0 in hex. Push ix, we will put this in the stack, so ix which is 1 c 2 4 in hex will be at the end of the stack uh, shl d low so dl means d low so the m least significant bits in dx which is 80 uh, 80 in hex so dl is 80 in hex and ch c high are the most uh, significant bits in C, so it's actually 90 in hex, which in turn this is, uh, as we have done earlier, conversions 1001, 1101, which is 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, which is 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 4 plus 2 to the power 3 plus 1 which in turn gives us 157 so we're going to move DL uh, 157 bits to the left so practically this doesn't contain 157 bits it contains way less so practically after this command is done DL will be 00H and in turn DX will actually be 0900 in hex push the x, we're going to put the x, uh, this one that we got at, on top of the stack like this, not the x, um, this is a tricky one 
we're going to take bakes which is which was I guess one four one three two yeah four one three two and uh, this in binary is zero one zero 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 one zero zero one zero zero one one zero zero one zero uh, not uh, this tells us that we have to negate this so it will be zero one 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 zero one one zero zero one one zero one this in turn uh, gives us um, in hex b e c d so this is b s c d in hex uh, this would be b x from here we're going to draw these lines so we can do easy calculations then we have uh, exclusive or bakes cheeks this is our bakes we're not going to write it again and the uh, cheeks is one zero zero one 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 zero one zero 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 one zero zero one one exclusive or means that it is a, an addition but um, if we uh, look for example if we have one one we'll just get zero and the one that we got in our minds we're not going to put it anywhere it just disappears so it's just zero here it's one 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 zero one 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 zero 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 one zero one this is a this is three this is b and this is e and this in turn will be our bx because th this will be our bx because uh, always the first one in here this will be the one that is modified so this is our bx and then pop ix this means that ix oh what have i done oh wait a second this means that ix will take um, the value that is first in the stack so a will be 0, 0900 0, 0 in hex so i'm going to write down here the final results after all these calculations ix will be as we said 0, 0900 0 in hex bx uh, will be a3 b e in hex cx will i think remain the same 9d13 in hex and dx will be uh, 0980 in hex so this is the exercise that we have done in sm this would be the last exercise i think uh yeah hope this was useful